Welcome to Data Driven Health Radio. All right, welcome to Data Driven Health Radio, where we look at the uh, science, the stories, and the technology of how individuals are taking control of their health and using data to help them reach a state of optimal wellness. And I'm very excited today to have the founder of a company that we've just started partnering with, My Macros, Jason Levy. Did I pronounce it right, Jason? Lowy. Lowy, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's Jason right. Lowy. And we're, uh, we're here on an early Saturday morning, so we're still a little sleepy, but we're gonna get this thing done. So Jason, welcome. First of all, thank, thank you for making it on Saturday morning. I'm really excited about our partnership and the integration we're working on. Yeah, it's really exciting. Ex- yeah, I'm really excited to hear your story, how you got into this, and really just in your own words, ex- explaining to people how you view this data as being something that they can use to improve their health, whether it's chronic disease or weight loss, and and what you would want to say to someone who's just starting to get into this and, and how your product aligns with your mission and your vision to help people live healthier lives. So first off, thanks for being here. It's my pleasure. And uh, thanks for doing this on a Saturday morning. It's, yeah. it's, it's been a little crazy getting ready for the new year's and all this stuff. So this is kind of the, the best time. Cool. Well, uh, give us a quick intro on Jason and we'll go from there. Sure. Sure. So, um, I got my master's degree in computer science from USC uh, Mm -hmm. back in 2012, Um, but before that, I've been bodybuilding for a long time. I did my first competition when I was 17 years old, Mm -hmm. Um, did it throughout college. I I won my natural pro card back in uh, 2009, Um, and through that whole time period, I was was trying every single diet tracking app available. Everything was was terrible, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, So as I progressed in my my education and and computer science and stuff like that, um, I finally got to the point where I was very fed up with everything that I was using, and I was spending more time picking out the flaws than actually using it. Mm -hmm. So it got to the point where just one night, I'm like, you know, I'm fed up with this. I'm going to go sit down and just make my own. I did the initial prototype in one night. Uh, I really had no intention of releasing anything. I was really just making something for me and my friends. Um, and I, just, I was just showing it to one of my, my friends in my, my uh, graduate computer science class. And he's like, oh, wow, that's really cool. I've never seen anything like that. You should definitely release it. I'm, nah, I don't know. I'm not, probably, I'm not really interested in that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then that was uh, 2011. Uh, and I finally ended up just taking his advice to re- of releasing it back in 2011. Um, and it's it, always it's always a leap of faith, isn't it? <laughs> I had no idea. out there for the world. Honestly, by, by the time that I released my macros plus, uh, there was ten to twenty apps already that were yeah. diet tracking apps. So mm-hmm. I figured it would be a waste of time. Mm-hmm. Um, but the more and more I, you know, wasted money buying various pro versions and all this stuff, everything was missing from a real complete data uh, sense. So like. You know, some of the apps, you could only have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Some of them didn't tell you the t- uh, total nutrition breakdown per meal, um, you know, and, and all these different limitations. Everything was, was very general, um, assuming that you know nothing and kind of like paving the, the, you know, the whole process. So for me, someone that had been involved in, in bodybuilding for, you know, years at that point, I, you know, I'm, I definitely wasn't a you know, a, a nutrition expert at that point, but I would like to think that I was a little bit more advanced than most people. And I know I'm not the only one that likes to see that data, mm-hmm. like to get a little bit more in-depth information about what you're eating, um, rather than just taking it at, you know, face value of, oh, this app says I'm doing good, so I'm doing well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wanted to come out with something that could be extremely professional level in terms of, of the information that you get, the information, the, the customization that you can do, but also not be overwhelming because, you know, in the end it is an app. So um, that's kind of what the goal of my macros plus was, was to come out with something that allows the kind of super user to um, use it how they would like in terms of in-depth knowledge, but also allow the beginner to kind of ease into that. That's awesome. Well, uh, I always love speaking with, with fellow entrepreneurs. My story of building Heads Up Health is, is almost exactly the same where I just didn't find the right product out there that, met my needs, built a prototype, and, and the rest is history. So it's great to hear your story. It, it's great to, I, I wasn't aware that you had a CS background, so I don't need to hold back on the um, technical details when I pester yeah. you with requests on the API. Yeah. So that's good to yeah. know. And actually, I think it was, um, 
Robert Sykes that that really pushed us to reach back out to you, the Keto Savage, mm -hmm. because uh, he, he, we were on his show and we're starting to work more with him. And, and he said, hey, Dave, you've got everything I need except my macros. So he was the one that gave us a little nudge to reach back out because I know you and I have been threatening to do this integration for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's been almost a year now. Yeah, um, I, I, I mailed you and you weren't ready and then you were ready and, and, and we were not in a good spot and now we finally both decided let's integrate Heads Up Health and My Macros. So yeah, yeah. awesome. Great. Okay, so um, what I thought we could do is maybe segue a little bit and just explain to people in your view what it is about nutrition tracking that is is most important and i guess um if you can share anything you've learned along the way from your users about how to how to best implement this in the course of daily life i mean just your your best practices on how nutrition tracking in general is is important around a healthy yeah. lifestyle your your mission for, for my macros, basically. Yeah, so um, I mean, the biggest thing when people think um, about tracking your diet is that it's hard and annoying and time yeah. consuming. And that is definitely true for the, for the beginning. Yeah. Uh, but there is a kind of like time frame where, where once you, you get past that, you're not gonna turn back. Yeah. So the great thing, in my opinion, about tracking your diet and actually weighing your food and think of that is that you actually start to understand what you're eating. Like yep. if you if you're working with a diet coach that says, okay, here's your prepackaged meals. Um, you eat this one at breakfast, this one at two, this one at five. Um, you'll definitely get results, and it'll definitely be easier and less thought provoking. But that means that you have to then work with that coach for the rest of your life. Yeah. So I personally, you know, I've been tracking my diet forever. So if I wanted to stop weighing my food, I would not gain a pound. I would not lose a pound because I've been doing it for a while so yep. I, I can eyeball things very easily so mm -hmm. that's kind of what I tell people is that yes there is going to be a little bit of a learning curve um, if you've never weighed your food before it might be annoying and it might be an effort but you know health doesn't come easy so it, it, it's worth the putting in the effort to better understand what you're consuming um, you know if I were to go out to a restaurant now I can pretty closely eyeball the, the, the macronutrients in that meal um, you know, sure that's come with years of, of training, but you can get yeah. pretty close after, you know, a month or so. So, um, so that's a good point, Jason. Let me jump in right there. And I think, uh, you learn in the first yeah. few weeks, if you've never put food on a scale, it just even doing that a few times changes the way you relate to a, a quantity of food that's put in front of you. And you start to train yourself to say, okay, that's approximately this many ounces or that many ounces. Even just doing that, it gets it drags people into this process of getting engaged with data, which I think is why you and I both started here. So I'd love to get your recommendations at the end of the show if you have some recommended scales that you, you would suggest to people because sure. I know I've been looking for one. But yeah, even just putting some stuff on a plate and, and learning what an ounce is and yeah. learning what, 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 if, what, what six grams is, that, that's the, making the these biggest. mental associations. The biggest thing that I think people mess up is what really is a tablespoon of peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> a tablespoon is not a heaping tablespoon. It is a yes. tablespoon. <laughs> yeah. We like to take some liberties. <laughs> and it's well, it an depends on what your, uh, your weight fluctuation goals are. Yeah. Gaining weight, go for it. <laughs> yeah. So so definitely getting a scale. And, and like you said, you don't have to use it forever. You, you need yeah. to use it long enough to train yourself to what a portion of, of the most common foods you eat is. And then occasionally you may need to bust it out if it's something new, for instance. Yes, completely agree, yeah. Also, um, reading labels. And actually, like I started keto a couple of years ago. I'd, I'd never really uh, tracked a lot of this stuff. But even just looking at protein, fat, carbs, total calories on a daily basis, you're, you're, you're getting yourself personally invested in these numbers and understanding how they, they map back to health. So just going through that exercise, I think, can have a profound impact on the way people think about food. Yeah. I mean, just, just knowing what you eat or what you consume is, is key. Yeah. Like, let's say that you every feel sluggish at two o'clock mm -hmm. and you don't even think why 
and you know maybe it's because you had a big bowl of pasta or something like that for lunch and then just tracking your food kind of makes you correlate the two whether whether you you know track it for as stringently as a some people, but just keeping a, even just a food log of what you're eating might be able to allow you to relate it to Absolutely. how you're feeling. Hey, Jason, can you hold on a sec? I'm going to actually switch off my Wi-Fi and into the, the hard line. I'm getting some uh, audio sure. problems here. One second. Sure thing. <clears throat> yeah, I forgot to switch to the... Um, hard line before we started here so there'll be a s short interruption on the video sure. uh, all right okay can you hear me yep Okay, we're back. Okay, yeah, so um, getting involved with the numbers, just understanding how food affects lifestyle. I guess uh, switching back to your company and, and your product now, can you tell us, like for instance with Heads Up Health, we really started getting our first highly engaged users coming out of the low carb keto community. And where do you see a lot of your user base coming from which which communities do you find that you're you're seeing the most uh, uptake and engagement and success so to start it was uh you know because i as i mentioned i was a head of bodybuilder so to start it was from that community the people that were very similar to me in terms of like they were using these you know uh, you know pc programs that weren't updated in 15 years and, yep. and not really made for them so that was that was the start and that's where i actually got a lot of my like beta testers early on yep. uh, and all my feedback is is my friends in that community um and ever since you know at first as I, as I mentioned i wasn't planning to release this at all so i just wanted to make it for a couple of my friends so it was very specific to bodybuilding to that type of, of lifestyle and as time grew on, I realized that there was a much bigger market for that. So I started to uh, implement more and more things that would be easier for people that are maybe a little less knowledgeable in terms of, of diet and, and health and kind of getting them into that, that area. So you know, as, as time grows on, it's really anyone. Like, for example, um, our app was just featured on uh, Good Morning America uh, with um, there was a, a, one of our sponsored athletes was doing this thing where they were um, basically being coaches for a set of twins and one twin was doing one diet and one twin was using our app. Uh, so, and they're not fitness competitors or anything. They're just, you know, moms. Um, so really the, anyone, anyone can use it. it. Yes. At first it was made for a little more of a, the athlete, but you know, another thing is that, you know, more and more people are fitting that mold now. So, you know, that, ha, ha, five years ago, how many, um, 35 year old women were doing CrossFit, like, you know, none. And now it, the, the amount of people that are interested in health and fitness has, has grown completely. Yeah. Cool. So it's, it's general purpose then it started, yeah. started in bodybuilding and, and then moved into general purpose. Yeah. From there. Cool. So, um, maybe we could get a little bit nerdy here for a second and talk a little bit about the technology behind your sure. product. Our, our app is, is a Ruby on rails application. So, um, for the, um, for the tech folks who, who are listening, would, uh, maybe you can share a little bit about the um, underlying technology behind the product. Yeah, sure. So we have an uh, Android app um, and we have an uh, iOS app. iOS app came way first. Do you, um, you do all the development yourself, Jason? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, so both of them are completely native, you know, mm -hmm. Swift, Objective-C, um, SQLite, all that stuff. Uh, and then for Android, it's Java. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you, have a web, you have a web app as well. Yep, yep. Uh, so that's done with a LAMP stack um, yep. and then HTML, JavaScript, and stuff like that. Great. I love it when, when products have mobile and web together. We, we started with web because we're pulling in lots of medical records and yeah. lots of different data, and, and we're, we're going mobile. Where, where did you start? So iOS was first and the only one for about three years. Yep. Um, so I thought it was extremely important for us to be on mobile first because that, you know, most of the time you're in your kitchen weighing your food and yes. you know, tracking, tracking has to be, as, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's not that fun. Yep. So tracking has to be the most seamless thing 
possible for people to actually do it. Yep. So that's why whenever I would be in the kitchen testing something on the prototype of it, and it took me longer than 10 seconds, I'd be like, okay, I need to change that. Yep. So that's why I thought I, I needed to go mobile first. Yep. Cool. Well, it's awesome. You do all the work yourself and you, you have the technical background. And so it's, it's, I'm sure it makes it, um, uh, it's, it's a, a labor of love, I'm sure to a certain degree. Uh, and it's a, it's a way to combine my uh, computer science and hobby of bodybuilding. Or, if, if you can that. bring all of those things together in life, then it's, it's amazing. So you've got work. educational back. <laughs> no, exactly. Same with me. It's not work. I love it. Um, so that's, that's, that's really cool. So, in, in your interactions with, with your user base, Jason, I'm sure you have people emailing you comments, questions. One of the most rewarding things for me is actually speaking with our users. If I have the chance to get them on the phone and, and hear their stories about where they've come from, whether it's a chronic condition or a weight loss condition, or, or in your case, successful athletes, after doing this for, for X amount of years and looking at who's using the product, who isn't, what features are working, what doesn't, what, keep, what keeps people motivated, what doesn't, C can you share any uh, lessons learned just from your interactions? Maybe it's the stories, maybe it's, it's what helps you in, inform your next product decisions. I mean, wh what do you take away from all of this personally? Yeah, I mean, it, it's really just here, you know, as you, as you said, hearing from the users is, you know, the first time I ever got an email with like, oh my God, this app is great. Like that just made my, my whole year. Yeah. Um, and it's just really listening to what they have to say is very important because as I mentioned, I made it originally for people that were in the fitness competition community. Yeah. And in order to get to a more general mindset, I couldn't do that myself. So I had to listen to what people were saying like, oh yes, this is great, but I wish it did this. Yeah. And then I, I legitimately take everything that people say and think about it. I don't, I, you know, I never brush anyone off about anything because everything they say has merit. Yeah. Um, and actually something interesting or something cool is that about a month ago, I, we got an email from a 70 year old woman that said that she'd always been gaining, you know, slowly gaining weight for the past 15 years. And uh, now since she started using our app, she doesn't steal her husband's popcorn anymore. And uh, she'll actually like starting to lose weight. So yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Just, like, yeah. yeah. As I said, the, the, the way that we've come from, you know, working with, uh, competitors only to having a 70 year old woman use our iOS app. It's crazy. <laughs> cool. Yes. The stories are the best part. And, and those connections I think are the most amazing. I've made a lot of great friends through heads up health and mm -hmm. the community we have is wonderful. So I'm sure it's the same for you. Um, you know, what I'd, what I'd love Jason is, is being the, being the, the, the engineer that built this thing and, and having a lot of people who have maybe tried tracking at one time or another, maybe they find it cumbersome, but there may be a lot of tricks and time savers that they're not aware of, like storing foods, using barcode scanners, getting a good scale. So could you rattle off in, in your opinion, what are some of the best practices that people should consider when, when they're tracking macros and, and how can they really get the most out of this experience in, in so your own words? Yeah. I, I try to tell people to kind of plan ahead. So t tracking your macros does take a little bit of effort. Yep. Um, it's, you know, it's much, it's more time consuming than just, you know, swing by the convenience store and picking up whatever is at the register. Yes. So, I generally tell people to on the weekend or, you know, whatever free day they have cook some stuff in bulk, you know, whether it be, you know, barbering, barbecuing up some chicken or cooking up some vegetables or, you know, holy pasta to last you the week or something like that. And then invest in some Tupperware because mm -hmm. like, it's, you know, as I said, if you're in an office setting, it's much easier to just, you know, run out to McDonald's or something like that to, to grab a lunch, but it takes a little bit of effort and, and you know, your, I think your health is worth it, but plan ahead um what is it saying plan ahead or plan to fail mm -hmm. um, so take plan that ahead, time invest in tupperware get a scale <laughs> yes get a scale um and you know in terms of of, of utilizing the app a little bit more efficiently so yeah, you, allow, you allow people to um star food so you know kind of favorite them mm -hmm. so as you're searching for things they'll show up first right. um something similar that we actually implemented recently which saves me a bunch of time is that when you're using the, the search feature in the app, after you add the food, it will then pre-fill the search results with foods that you eat alongside that. So let's say, for example, if I were to go and track uh, 
you know, egg whites. Mm -hmm. I would come back to the search field and it would be filled with the rest of my breakfast items that I normally have with it. So you'd, you'd see yep. oatmeal there, you'd see protein powder, you'd see whatever. Just little things, like you said, that make little it simple, things, yeah. seamless, so and as low don't friction. Type in the rest, yes. every single yeah. item. Just grab them right there. They're all listed yeah. for me. Cool. And in a second here, we're going to do some screen sharing for people who are watching on YouTube. And we're going to show the integration with Heads Up Health, at least the, the first phase of that project. You and I are working on a bunch of stuff. And then maybe we can pass the controls over to you and actually show people, in your opinion, what are the features that can help them save time? Maybe some of the features that you wouldn't normally come across in your first few times using the app, but, but they're killer, like the ability to start something. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll go from there. So um, I'm going to start here and share my screen with you. And I don't think you've even seen the initial implementation yet. So it should be good for both of us. Here we go. Share screen. All right. Let me know when it's loaded for you, Jason. It's loading. Okay, so this is our beta environment. We'll be deploying the My Macros integration into the production version of Heads Up Health uh, later tonight. So for anyone who's listening, it'll be available on Sunday. So you can see I've got my dashboard set up here with just a bunch of random metrics. This is, um, again, beta. So the way to do the initial connection is here through Connect Data. This is where you connect everything, devices, apps, medical facilities, whatever the case may be. And over here, we've got the My Macros Plus integration and Aura, which is another one we just finished up, Ketonics, and we're building a lot more. But here's the integration we did with you guys, and it does require a username and password. Just make sure it has the right password in there. So pretty straightforward. Um, we're working, Jason, on using a username instead of email. That's yep. one thing that will help us. So as soon as you make the link and we validate your username and password is legit, then you're prompted to add these sources to your dashboard. I already have them on my dashboard. That's why they're grayed out. And um, total calories, that's a big one for us. So hopefully we can get that one working as well. And then you'll notice the protein, fat, and carbs. Actually, there's two choices now. So you can toggle between uh, manual entry, my macros, or whatever other um, supported app we'll, we'll work on in the future. And then like all of these sources, you have the ability to trend these results over 30 days. I've only just started using your app, so I don't actually have a lot of data in there yet. But you can see for today, which is 1230, I've only really had um, coffee with heavy whipping cream. So I'm at 12 grams of fat and two grams of carbs or whatever it was from the cream. So that's, that's the basics of getting stuff on the dashboard. And then what we want to do is help people trend this data over time. We want to help people add this information to their weekly reports that they get to see how their macros are doing, be able to compare things like carbohydrate intake to, for example, fasting blood sugar or ketone levels, for example. So there's the ability to come in here and graph all of this data as well. So that's where the trending capability comes in. Again, because this is beta, I don't have a lot of data in here. And then also look at if you're working on markers of disease, how this might affect things like inflammation levels, uh, hemoglobin A1C, as you go paleo, how does that affect things like thyroid numbers? So we've got all of the medical records in here as well. What I realized, Jason, when I went through my exercise to, to get all of my health data organized, was there was no system where I could get my medical records and my lifestyle data. So you mentioned the reasons you built this. For me, it was, I need to see how this clinical stuff, when I go to the doctor and he takes blood, is correlated with my lifestyle metrics. So that's where a lot of the implementation will focus. And then, of course, the ability to get regular reporting on my macros would be important as well. So that's the basic implementation. I know we've sent you a, a, a wish list of things yep. that we want to work on together as part of the partnership. One of those being the ability to send us the food lists because we just haven't found any other app that will do that. And if, if I'm sharing my heads up health profile with a coach or a practitioner, it's great to have the macros, but a lot of times it's also important to know what foods were there, yeah, especially if you're trying to look at things like food sensitivities or 
even carb sources to eat versus avoid. There's lots of different types of carbohydrates. And so if you can build that for us, then it puts us in a really awesome position. But that's the first implementation, Jason. I think it's the first time you've seen it. So yeah, that's, great. that's where we're at so far. Cool. Yeah, so lots more to come on this partnership. And um, maybe now we can, uh, we can throw it back to you and you can take us through the web app and maybe sure, yeah. your- I, actually we just released a, a feature last month that I think would be great to share. Let me yeah. just, let me so just, just uh, uh, talk through it do? verbally for people who are listening on sure. iTunes and then also there's going to be some YouTube viewership as well. So there's both types of uh, listeners here. You want me to switch to screen sharing or just go? Yeah, you should be able to screen share through the zoom uh, interface. Yeah, I idea how to do that, so. <laughs> Are you on Mac? Yeah. Yeah, just open up the Zoom uh, app, and then uh, down at the bottom, the middle button is Share Screen. It's, oh, uh, Share Screen, got it. Screen, okay. yeah. Let's see. All right, can you see me? Yeah, it looks great, yep. Oh, do you see it? Yep, it's perfect. You just went full screen, actually. That works okay. uh, pretty good as well. Okay, what I'll you want to do. All right. All right, so yeah, we actually, um, so this is uh, my Mac OS Plus. Yep. Uh, my connection to this room is not great. Sorry about that. No uh, so. Um, something that we just came out with um, over the past month is actually, and something that we've been working on all year, um, is something that we call our macro coach feature. Mm-hmm. Um, what that is, is basically the, you know, tracking your, your macros is great, but a lot of people don't know how much they should consume for their goals. Yep. So, uh, you know, the, the options are to kind of you know, do it for five years until you figure it out like I did, mm-hmm. um, or hire a nutritionist or a coach to kind of guide you along the way which is a, an unbelievable option, um, yep. but it's also very expensive. Um, yep. you know, some coaches go anywhere from 150 to $300 a month. Yep. Um, if you have the money, go for it because you'll get a very personalized experience. Sure. But a lot of people don't, or a lot of people you know, don't even want the, the, the one-on-one coach. Yep. Experience. So um, over the past year, we partnered with some coaches and some uh, uh, registered dietitians um, to create uh, what we like to think is the solution for that. So right. um, one of the athletes that we sponsored, her name's Katie Rutherford, and she's actually currently the world champion uh, figure competitor mm-hmm. um, and an online coach. So we worked with her to come up with uh, a bunch of different algorithms to help people figure out what it is that they should be consuming to reach their goals. So um, the way it works is this is, for example, my dashboard. Um, so the way it works is that you first come in and you select your goals. So mm-hmm. it pre-fills, it's, you know, it's built around the top of my macros plus it pre-fills a lot of your information. So you come in and say, okay, I am a male of this measurement, age 28, um, fill out all this various information. And then you come and say, what are your goals? So mm-hmm. let's just say that I want to lose weight fast um, and whatever. So after you fill out your questionnaire, it'll then give you your starting macronutrient values that you should eat to reach those goals. So obviously right. if you want to lose weight, it'll be less than what your maintenance is. If you want to gain weight, it'll be a little bit higher. So um, the best part about it is, is that as you progress, it kind of learns what you need to eat. So for example, you know, you may say your activity level is this, but it re- might really be a lot less than you say or, or, or vice versa. And as you go on in the system, it kind of learns what you really need to reach your goals. It kind of narrows down on that. So, yep. for example, I started at 226 pounds eating just over 4,000 calories. And after about two months or three months or so, it brought me down to just above three uh, 3,000 calories. And I am down to 212. So, so it's calibrating as, for you as you go through. Exactly. That's exactly. fantastic. As you go every week. So yeah. for example, you see I have three days until I have to check in again. So every yeah. every seven days you go and check in. Yep. Yeah. Fill out, you know, as I said, it's built on my macro, so it fills out a lot of the information for you. And then you are and then you check in and then it runs through our algorithm again and updates you based off of how you're progressing. So um, if you lost weight too fast, which is also not a good thing, it will kind of slow up for you. If you gain weight, uh, if you gain at the right speed, it won't do anything. Um, and it'll really just keep you on track. 
Yep. So it kind of takes the guesswork out of a lot of stuff. So yeah, that's what I said. The, the, a lot of the, the biggest pitfalls for people starting out is that they don't know what they should be eating. Sure. Um, so this is a way to alleviate that. Yeah. And like you said, it's, it's affordable because personal yeah. coaching can, can be expensive. Yeah. And so this is, is $10 a month. Fantastic. And, and honestly, when I went on the whole path to, to, to really starting to get educated around this, learning how to, to track what you eat is the foundation for everything else that you're going to do. Food really forms the basis and having an awareness of calories and macronutrient breakdown and just even starting to build that education. It's a lifelong thing that you can go back to anytime. And most importantly, it, it helps you understand what's in your food. I don't think a lot of people even realize something's there's high fructose corn syrup in everything, as you know, mustard, <laughs> you name it. There's, there's different names for sugar in food, as I'm sure you know. It comes in all kinds of different disguises. And so un unless you're really starting to read the labels, use the barcode scanner, find out, wow, I didn't even realize that this has so much uh, sugar or refined carbohydrate in there. It... It is work up front, and it's unfortunate. Yeah, oh, sorry, I, I couldn't hear you for a second. I, I see you. Oh, cool. Yeah, it, it is unfortunate that uh, a lot of the times we have to go through so much work just to figure out how to eat in our society. But food, corporate food interests are not always aligned with uh, human waistline interests. Yeah, those and, two and are inversely to, proportional. <laughs> just to, to piggyback off that, you know. If there was ever anything worth putting in the effort for, it is your health. So, uh, yes, it is not the easiest thing to do, um, but it is the best investment you can make because, you know, it could lead to a much, uh, much lower hospital bill in the future. Yep. Cool. So maybe um, in closing, we can just share a few other things within the app. What are some of the the time saving features? And again, assume people may not even track macros. Like for instance, a barcode scanner is really helpful. To just yeah, so we, yeah, we have a barcode scanner. Top features to make it easy for people to get started. Yeah, so we have we have a barcode scanner. Um, we have um, over about five million foods that you can search from. Mm -hmm. um, so you really shouldn't have a problem finding anything. Mm -hmm. um, it's very easy to put in custom foods as well. So uh, one of the things that I hated with apps that I used pr uh, prior was how everything was measured in like, you know, fractionals. So you, you put in, let's say I put in 32 grams of peanut butter in a, as a custom food, it would then be recorded as 32 grams and you'd have to do fractions to, to get the amount that you want. So you know, you'd have to put five eighths of 32 grams, which is not really convenient at all. So uh, we made it, so everything compiles down to, to one, so if I put in 32 grams, it saves as one. So that way you have a complete free form entry moving forward. Um, and it's, you can, you can add a food in under three taps. So you really can't get much easier than that. Yep. Cool. All right. So we've got our, our basic implementation working and we're, we're going to keep building on that. There's also uh, one other, there's another app you're working on as well that I haven't had time to investigate yet, which is on the um, workout tracking side. Is that correct? Yeah. So we have a, a kind of our sister app called My Workout Plus. Yep. Uh, they, they integrate with one another. Um, it's very similar to My Macros, except for work, a workout uh, aspect. So it allows you to track your sets, reps, see metrics like RPE and and uh, record your 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 uh, rest time and stuff like that. Uh, track notes, um, have supersets and stuff like that. So again, that was very similar. And uh, every workout tracking app that I found was missing something. You couldn't yeah. do one thing, you couldn't do another. Yeah. So that's why we came up with that. So um, cool. it's in a very similar aspect in the fact that it lets you um, see a lot of advanced metrics, but you're not overwhelmed by them if you don't care. Yep. Cool. Well, I hope at some point we can also take a look at how we can integrate there as well and um, get, get both products going. And then you know, most importantly, Jason, is just you know, maybe share a little bit on, on taking the plunge and, and being an entrepreneur. I know there's, there's tons of people out there who are really passionate about helping people improve their lives and, and improve their health and just taking that leap and actually starting to build something. I know when I spoke with Robert, he was asking about building his own 
type of a product as well. So I love speaking with entrepreneurs who just go out there, they see something that's not quite right in the world that can make a difference in people's lives. We, we had the exact same experience there just albeit in, in different types of products. So any, any words of encouragement out there for somebody who has an idea to get into this space and, and is just maybe unsure of how to, how to take the plunge? Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing I could say is just start, honestly. Um, as I said, I, you know, my, my friends were going out one night in college and I stayed back to work on an app instead. And that's what came from it. So, um, Honestly, just start. Don't think you need to raise $10 million to, to start something. Mm -hmm. Don't think you need to quit your job and do it full time to start something. Just start, keep consistent with it, see if it gains traction, and then go from there. Um, cool. A lot of people build up these things that, oh, I have to do this, I have to do this. And it's, you can just go at your own pace. It's something that you're passionate about. And if you're passionate about with it, you'll make something good and it will kind of be successful that way. Love it. And I was going to ask you for a recommendation on uh, preferred food scales. You've probably used more than I have. And so I forgot the name of the one that I, I was trying to remember the name of the one that I have. Uh, let me see if I have a picture. Just, just shoot it to me afterwards. We'll include yeah. it here in the show notes. I think it's called like Oslo or something like that. But right. we'll, we'll include a link there. We'll obviously uh, have, have links to, to your product and we'll keep everyone updated as we continue to do the integrations here. So really appreciate having you on here. I'm glad that we actually get to see each other face to face. Yeah. Sometimes you, you work with people for years and never actually see their face in the tech world. Yeah. I'm sure you know. Yeah. So really happy that we got the initial integration going, that we're starting to get some momentum together. Really happy about our partnership. Thanks for coming on on a Saturday morning. Thanks for having we're, me. We're really excited to start recommending uh, my macros as our preferred nutrition tracker for all of our Heads Up Health users. So it's just the beginning. I'm sure as we get further down the path, we'll, we'll have more things that we can share and talk about and demo for people. So it's been awesome having you, and uh, I'll let you get back to your weekend, Jason. Thanks. Have a, have a great weekend yourself. All right. Thanks, man. Talk to you later. Bye.